picture for him to see if he lies. Turn the audio down. Everybody there? Okay, I see everybody. Can you all hear us? Yes. Okay, all right. We stomped on that devil so far. Check, check the live, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, okay. Good evening, everybody. And uh, give us some intro music here so we can do our introduction here. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. And welcome to the Adams Brothers Podcast. We have a good show in store for you here today. If you're out there in uh, Facebook land, come on in the room, come on in the room. We have a hot topic here today. And the topic here today is... Why is the church empty? We have a panel of guests here today. We have our pastor, Reverend Clarence Honor, from Greater Bethel AME Deerfield Beach. We have also, we have Pastor Anthony T. Pelt Sr. from uh, Radiant Worship Living. Christian Center, I believe it is. Tell us what it is, Pastor. Tell us what it is. Radiant Living Worship Center. Just know more about the D radio. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. And uh, ladies, first we're going to introduce Miss Evelyn Price. Uh, she is also from, she's from Deerfield Beach. Miss Gail McFadden is from Deerfield Beach. Mr. Uh, Deron Grissett. Uh, born and raised in Pompano Beach, and Mr. Desmond Wilson. He was born and raised right here in Deerfield Beach. So, everybody, welcome to the show. Thank you all so much for Lord of Music, please. Thank you all so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, come and talk uh, talk to us about this very, very hot topic that uh, everybody is talking about, uh, not just in our church, Greater Bethel AME Deerfield Beach, but it's being talked about all over the country. And uh, we want to see if we can try and get some answers and um, see if we can if we can get the people back to church and find out uh, the reasons why they aren't coming to church. And uh, we know that um, COVID also has something to do with it, a, a huge part. COVID played a huge, huge part of why people aren't in the church right now. Uh, but COVID is, uh, thank God, COVID is slowly uh, going away from us and allowing us to get back to our normal lives. So um, we want to see if we can get some answers here today uh, from our panelists. We got some people here that, um, you know, um, like I say, grew up into the church. It doesn't necessarily have to be the black church. It could be any church, you know, and uh, some people uh, left the church. And uh, we want to see if we could get some reasons why these uh, individuals left the uh, church and, uh, and, and see if we can get some answers as to why we can, how we can get them back there. So uh, we're going to do ladies first here today. Uh, well, no, I'll I take that back. We're going to ask that uh, Reverend uh, uh, Pastor uh, Anthony T. Pelt start us off. Uh, and, and prayer, please. Well, Father, we are forever grateful and thankful for another day that you've made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, your word is so clear. Come, let us reason together. I pray now that our discussion will be lively, it will be fruitful, but oh God, it will bring grace and truly bring some to see that you are the true source of our strength and our hope. I pray now for those who are watching. I pray those who are asked, that in all that we do, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart would be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, you know, we, 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 we're going we're gonna to start off. Uh, we're going to start off with our pastors here. Um, uh, first, uh, like I say, uh, we're going to allow you to introduce yourself right quick. Pay, uh, Reverend Honor, go ahead and tell us a little bit about you. And uh um, and, and uh, we'll go on uh, to Pastor Pelt, and then we'll do ladies, and we'll and so forth. Uh, good evening. I'm Pastor Honor of Greater Bethel AME Church. Um, 
I have been serving now as a pastor for years. Um, and I just thank God to be able to um, see another day. Pastor Pelt. Uh, pastor Anthony Pelt, senior pastor and founder of Radiant Navy Worship Center, also in Deerfield Beach. Uh, been there, mm, not too sure, but a long time. Long enough that I lost all my hair. Uh, but I'm honored <laughs> to be on today and honored to serve the city of Deerfield Beach and the kingdom of God. Okay, we're going to go to uh, Miss Evelyn Price. Good evening, everybody. My name is Evelyn Price. I was born and raised in the beautiful little city of Deerfield Beach. I'm proud of Deerfield. Uh, my church is Emmanuel Christian Center, and I serve under the leadership of the Reverend Dr. Nathaniel Knowles. Okay. Ms. Gail McFadden. Hi, yes, my name is Gail McFadden, and I was also born and raised in Deerfield and been here all my life. And um, my pastor and my church is Christian Life Center under Pastor Manning. Duran Grissett. Hi, my name is Duran Grissett. Um, born and raised in Pompano Beach and currently is not attending the church at this moment. And lastly, Mr. Desmond Wilson. Uh, Desmond Wilson, born and raised in Deerfield Beach, uh, where I attend Greater Bethel AME Church, where the Reverend Clarence Sana is my pastor. And he is also our pastor, too, as well. So we go to Greater Bethel and born and raised here right here in Deerfield Beach and grew up in First Zion. But we uh, also grew up in Greater Bethel. Used to go to Greater Bethel with my grandfather, Mr. B uh, Morris Buster Adams. Uh, way back in the early 70s and uh, uh, continued to go there um, through our little childhood days. And between First Zion and uh, Greater Bethel, that's been our church home for all of our lives. So between those two churches, we've, we, that's where we grew up in the church. So let's, let's talk about why the church is empty. And uh, Pastor Honor, uh, let, let, let's start with you. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on why uh, the black church, well, not even a black church, the church is, is empty right now. Uh, we'd like to, uh, you know, hear from you and, and your opinion. Well, let me first um, say that um, I understand the question, um, but my mindset says to me that uh, the church isn't empty, but the building is. Uh, because we are the church. And I think that the reason why it's empty or we consider it to be empty is because um, our mindset, our outlook towards things now are different than what they used to be. Um, one of the things is, as I state on some Sundays, um, a lot of things wherein we now have more opportunities to do and go to on Sunday overrides the church. And so therefore, this is the reason why. And um, it, it's, just, it's just right now at one of those times wherein uh, the importance and priorities are different. And when you say priorities, uh, um, could you elaborate a little farther? I mean, like priorities, like work. Well, well, well you, one, you you have work, you have um, activities, um, you know, those type things um, have a have a um, the ability to wherein we we now making decisions on okay well do i do i really want to go to this or do i really want to go to that and so because i may enjoy this better than i enjoy that it, 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 it's no longer a hard decision uh, matter of fact if service start at 11 but the game start at one you know, we got to get a head start to get a parking lot so we won't worry about coming to service 
you know, we, we, we would do what we need to do to get a good and decent um, seating or parking at, at that game or that festi festivities. So it, it's no longer to me, and I, I just feel like that it's no longer as important as it once was because um, our mind has no longer transformed. Now, Pastor Pell, uh, we talked a little bit when I when when I originally uh, re uh, initially reached out to you about being on the on the on the on the podcast, yeah. and and you said that uh, you know church membership is down everywhere thirty percent, and and tell us your thoughts on 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 why you think that uh, the membership is down. Uh, thirty percent, you know, all over the all over the country. Um, now, what 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 are your thoughts on that, Pastor Pell? You know, one of the things that the pastor just brought up that there are forces being made. People are choosing to say, "I'm not going to church," and part of that is because we now live in a day and time when attendance, attachment, and allegiance aren't the same thing. Back in the day, allegiance and attachment meant attendance. It doesn't mean that today. And so people say, listen, my allegiance to the church is not broken because I don't attend church. My association with church is not broken because I don't attend church. Um, and, you know, because of that, you're finding that people are saying, I can be attached to a church and not attend the church. And that's that's just a, a different mindset that we're, that we're having to face. I think the other thing that we're facing is, is that when COVID came up, COVID gave people the freedom to say, I ain't going. Amen. You know, you, you, you know, all of us, especially on this, you know, come from probably the context of African-American church. You just said something. You started at a church and you went to a church, but you kind of had family kind of guiding you either way. Well, see, COVID was the first thing you could, you could tell your mom, hey, mom, I'm not, I'm not going to church. You know, they got COVID over there. You know, any other time you, you can't tell them that. And so the associations that even attach people to churches aren't the same. Big Mama used to make us church. My auntie brought me to church. That, that, those associations aren't, aren't there anymore like that. And so we're having to face, like I said, I, I served as the administrative bishop of about, a, about 165 churches that I put my hand on in the state of Florida. Uh, COVID, COVID hurt us. Uh, you know, it's people, people said, I'm not going. Uh, uh, I was in a meeting two weeks ago, and something like Sunday school, which was kind of like the feeder to a service, Sunday school has been down because people say, hey, I'm not going to Sunday school. I'm not getting up early to go. Um, or they said, I can have Sunday school and not go to church. So even this, this technology we have right now, you know, in my church right now, there's a great debate. You shouldn't do nothing on Facebook. You shouldn't do nothing live like this anymore. Force them to come to church. And I told myself, okay, you can play that game if you want to. But they ain't coming, and because they're not coming, you're still going to be in the same situation. So one of the things I would just say, attachment, allegiance, and attendance just don't mean the same thing. Okay, and you know, it, and 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 that's that's you, you make a great point. Uh, and, and and back when we were growing up, back in the seventies and the eighties, today is a different era. You know, yes. we didn't have a choice. We had to go to church. Or we would get our behinds beat, you know. We had to go to church. We didn't have a choice. I think today's in today's society, I don't, I don't, I think the parents are more lean on, you know, having, you know, making their kids go to church. They might say, well, if he don't want to go, I'm not gonna make him go. Or, or, you know, it's just for whatever reason, I'm not gonna make my child go to church. Uh, my child isn't learning anything in church, or for whatever reason, but we didn't have choices to go to church back in the 70s. We didn't have a choice uh, at all. We had to go. And back in back in the 70s and the 80s, and I would say into the 90s, that if you didn't get back when, when we were going to First Zion, if you didn't get there at 11 or oh, 11 o'clock or 11 15, you wouldn't get a seat. You had to stand up along the wall and they would even put chairs out into the aisleway or sit you into the choir. But things has changed now, you know, things has changed now. You could, there's the, the church is, is empty. You could count on two, two hands, two, three hands, how many people 
that are in the church right now. Sit anywhere you want. And you can sit anywhere you want. And <laughs> we, but we've been asking this question to a lot of people. Like, you know, why, why aren't people coming to church, you know? And, and you both, you and Pastor Honor, you both touched on some very excellent points. But we also have some people here that, that has, you know, you know. Might have had problems. Or, might, may or have had some, some situations. Right. That- might have led them otherwise. Absolutely. But, so but also too, if I may just interject while we're on this, and I think this is a very good and great discussion. What we are doing right now um, has pretty much caused our churches, <laughs> like 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 Bishop said, you know, to to fall off because I don't have to get up and do makeup. I ain't got to get up. I just go and hit a screen and boom. I'm there. So, you know, back back in the day, you're right. You couldn't tell mom and daddy you wasn't going to church. It, 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 you know, it, it was no such thing as I'm not getting nothing out of it because even if you didn't understand what the pastor was preaching about, your parents still taught you about Jesus. So it's not so much you learned in, while you were in church that you learned at home. See, but now because of where we are and the way things work, uh, you know, the question is asked, and I, and I pray I don't offend nobody, but who's raising who? See, so when you look at the fact who raising who, if I get up at, 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 at I know church started at 10, I get up five minutes to 10 and I go in and hit my iPad, my phone. Uh, and, and pop up Greater Bethel and they live stream, I consider myself in church. But I don't consider the portion that says we must what? Fellowship one with another. So that that that's another reason. So but what about the people that are sick and shut in and the people that are out of town that are traveling around the country? Uh, what about those people that 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 want to tune in to the live stream that can't make it to church? And let's, I mean, let's be, just be real. Everybody can't come to church every Sunday. We all Correct. have 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 families and we all work jobs and we want to travel around the country and everything. And everybody can't come to church every, every Sunday, single Sunday. I know I can't. You know, I, I, I like that. I've been I worked three jobs for 18 years and now it's time for me to get off and, and go travel. But and, there, um, is, there is a difference, um, Brother Adam. There is a difference in those who can yeah. and just those that don't. Okay. You know, it, it, it's like saying, um, if I'm able to go, I need to go and fellowship every now and then. I'm not talking every Sunday, but that person that's confined, this is a blessing that they'll be, they are able to receive the word, receive this because they are confined. But when you when 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 God has given you the ability to be able to go and you just don't go. Right. See, that that's you know. Right, that's, right. We like to hear from our panel. We're gonna we're gonna go to we're gonna go to Evelyn because Evelyn and I when when I talked to Evelyn, I, I we, we talked uh, when I called you about the podcast and Evelyn touched on comfort and uh, convenience. So, Evelyn, uh, uh, kind of tell the panel uh, well, what you meant by confident convenience and, and, and go ahead and share any other thoughts that you have about why the church is empty. Well, I'm going to start out and I'm going to agree with Pastor Honor. Um, first of all, I've been in church my entire life probably from the day they brought me home from the hospital until now. Um, We weren't given a choice. We're going to church. That's in a discussion. That's it. True. And there was no debating, no, no. This is what we gonna do. Um, And I can remember I can remember my mom saying to me, you're not gonna ever always be able to do what you wanna do. You're gonna always have to answer to somebody 
or something regarding it. Um, whether that's just people in general or if that's God, you know, it was, I had a found foundation laid for me. And as crazy as some people might say, you know, um, I can remember probably being 19 or 20 and saying, you know, I don't wanna go to church today. And she had to say nothing. She just gave me a look. Okay, let me go ahead and find something to wear to church because it looked like we're going. You know, right now I'm, I, am, I am overjoyed that my parents were that way. You know, they, they led me down the straight and narrow path. You know, now we're, and I, I'm not going to say that we didn't experience it before. There is a world of people that are just lost. They don't have a clue about anything with God. Nothing. They don't, you know, I can probably say they don't even know it is a God. Um, and they're just lost. And I, you know, I, I say to a lot of my classmates, you know, I think we are the generation that we failed our kids. We didn't want our kids to, we wanted our kids to have better stuff than what we had. Now, when I look back, I, you know, now I can say I had a good life. I can't say one time I was hungry. You know, I, 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 I'm not gonna say, well, we weren't rich, we were poor, but I can't say I knew we were poor. It was never a time that I remember that I went to bed hungry or was cold or anything, you know, but I ain't going to say I got everything I wanted now, but, you know, but there's, it's just different. We don't, we don't want anybody to say anything to our kids. There went the discipline and, and for me, that's out the window. That's everything there because you can't, can't tell them anything. You can't look at them. You can't. There's nothing. So it's, it's just like in their minds, they're teaching themselves, but how do you teach yourself? And Duran, everything you heard so far, uh, how would you respond to everything you heard so far, Duran? You grew up in Pompano and uh, your mother and father took you to church as a young, young, young boy, young child. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you went to church with your mother, your parents and I know we talked off off camera as well, and yep. uh, you kind of strayed away from the church. But I mean, tell them, tell them, tell them the reason why, uh, and your beliefs on why the church is empty, and what made you kind of stray away from the from the church. Well, like you said, um, I grew up in the church. I remember, you know, Sunday mornings coming on, my dad playing his music or whatever. And, um, you know, I'm laying in the bed under the covers, you know, hoping he ain't opening the room, though. But then sometimes I just didn't want to go as a kid. You know, I didn't understand it. My mind wasn't um, all the way there in church because I just didn't understand. I was too young. But my father, my parents was just doing their job and just leading me in the right direction. And they did. Um, I strayed away from the church. Uh, it all began when I started to read the Bible from page one all the way to the end. And you read the whole Bible to be, be, be exact, right? Yes, to be exact. I'm actually on my fourth time reading it from the front to back. Right. And every time I have read it from front to back, I have accumulated more knowledge that I, you know, passed before, you know? Um, so it enlightened me more and more, even though I read it four, four times already. Um, I just realized that um, the way the churches ran and um, what's being presented to the people at the moment, that's not what entirely what God wants for the people. Um, we have, you know, he commands us to keep the Sabbath, honor and guard, guard it with our heart. Um, we have certain um, rules that he want us to upkeep from generations to generation. Um, he also wants, um, how can I say this? He has festivities of himself. 
that honors him and his son and the sacrifice that's been made for for us as a whole. And I realized that um, a lot of churches are not presenting these things. A lot of churches are constantly preaching prosperity and hope. And, and that's it. They're not really teaching us what God wants, what God condemns. They're not teaching these things. And the reason why, the reason why the church is empty is, is I'm going to say it's two reasons. We are entering into the last days. Like many people say this all the time, but we are. And a lot of people are starting not to believe in God anymore. That's just, that's just what it is. A lot of people feel like the, uh, I know many have heard that people feel like, oh, who wrote the Bible? Oh, the white man wrote the Bible. Oh, that's a book that was given to the slaves. So a lot of people are running away from God because a lot of people are believing that. The, like the Bible says, there are itchy ears and there's going to be false doctrine that's being said. And a lot of people are going to believe those false doctrines and stray away. So that's happening as well. And then you have individuals that, that God is touching and getting enlightened and, and starting to surpass the church and going into different levels of thinking and following God the way he wants them to, and he, they're leaving the church. So that's what's happening. Dale McFadden, talk to us. Yes. I know well. you, you, you <laughs> are very opinionated, yes. so come with yes. it, Gil, and let us know. Give us your opinion. Well, you know? and Desmond, you next. And Desmond, you next up. So uh, we 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 want to hear. <laughs> I mean, we want to help these pastors uh, mm-hmm. figure it out why why the why the church, you know, and hear from some people that left the church, you know, and uh, went to mm-hmm. other churches or whatever, and and we want to figure it out how, how we can get them back there and what what can we all do collectively. So, uh, Gail, you have you okay. have you have the floor. My my case is a little bit different from everybody uh-huh. else's case. My church has never lacked. We haven't lost members. We've actually actually probably gained another five or 800 members. Um, We've even added our fifth church. Um, My church, I'm in a non-denominational church and I kind of agree with the fellow that just spoke. We, we, We were dealing with a different generation of people. These people are not like we were when we were growing up in the church. These people are techie, they're smart. And if you don't give them information, they're not gonna stay. You can't shout, run around, beat the drums, whatever. They're not that type of generation. This generation wants to know why they come into church. Who is God? What, I mean, what does he require of us? I mean, my church is probably about 5,000 members. We didn't lose members before COVID. We didn't lose members through the COVID and we didn't lose members after COVID was gone. My church is a Bible teaching church. We don't have a lot of asset excess stuff that you normally see in an average black church. This young generation want information and they they wanna know why they're coming to church. You can't just keep just preaching and teaching something you've been teaching four or 500 years ago this generation don't want to hear that. You got to give them new information. You got to tell them why they're coming to church. They don't even know why they're coming. Like the young fellow was saying, you just doing what you normally do, what you've been doing for the last hundred years, that's not going to get this new generation of people. They got their cell phones in their hands. They got, they can Google information. And we as a black church, but my church is non-denominational, we don't give them enough of information to want them to even love God or even find out who he really is. They leave, they come empty, they leave empty. In my church, we have 12, 13 years old kids that can verbatim give you four to 500 scriptures that's in their head because we teach our youth. Our youth is running over. We have to have a separate church for the youth because it's about 400 people just in the youth church. So my, my problem, my church, we don't have that problem that the average black church is having right now. We, I mean, in two months, we have missions in two months, 
we can easily raise one hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars. Wow. And that's just for the mission. Last year in our mission for the whole year, all of the churches, we raised sixteen million dollars. We don't have these issues that a black, a normal black church has because it is a Bible teaching church. We, we don't have pastor's appreciation. We don't have a, a lot of these other access stuff that you normally see in a black church. It, it's a discipleship church. They, they, they strictly go by the scripture where Jesus left and when he sta stated, go make disciples. So they believe in, we're here to make disciples because we know that God is coming back one day and we're gonna go out into the world and try to win as many souls as we can. A lot of the stuff that you normally see in the black church, we don't have that in my church. So, so you, my, 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 um, my church don't have, we don't have, we, we're not going through any, any issues. So you think that it's, it, 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 I heard you touch on teachings. Do you think mm -hmm. teachings has a lot to do with yes. uh, getting people back to the church? And you have uh, to what? have, you have to have, you have to have things in place, especially for our youth. Our youth attention span is very short. Yes. You can't, you, if you don't have some positive things at the church, and being consistent, they're not gonna stay. They're just gonna put out their cell phone. You could be up preaching and pop, the cell phone is coming out. Because sometimes preaching doesn't work. Sometimes you have to teach. It's just like, for instance, if you're screaming at your child all day and you say, oh, and he's saying, did you hear me? No, he didn't hear you. Sometimes you gotta sit down and just talk to that person, teach yeah. that child. Because yeah. sometimes screaming and shouting, nine times a 10, they're not even listening. So our youth, we have a very strong youth department. We have a very strong church because it's a Bible-based teaching church. It's non-denominational. We don't preach, uh, we don't preach, put it this way, we don't preach traditions. We preach only what the Bible says. Okay, Desmond Wilson. Desmond, all what you heard, tell us what you think. Okay. What are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on uh why uh the black not even a black church and i and gail said the black church and i, I, I it could be, it could be any the church. Black church yes it could be it any church but what are your thoughts on uh why the church is empty and and what can we do to get people back to the church um well first off i, I think this is a great conversation um uh, my first point would be to say that social media social media because we talk about the numbers in church after COVID and some kind of blame COVID for the numbers of the downfall of the church, but the numbers were actually falling off before COVID because of right. social media. Mm -hmm. And I think that is because people begin to, as people say, get different information and they begin to get uh, transparency within the word as we talk about the Bible. Um, because as we go to church, we don't always get that. We don't always get that in our churches. And when someone when, like 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 Ms. Gail said, when a, when someone like myself who's forty five or within the forty year old range, and we're looking for information, we want mm -hmm. transparency within the world. Yes. We want you know yes. great leadership. We want all That's these right. things, and sometimes within our own churches, we don't get those things. And That's right. it causes us to stray away from our body, which means that, you know, we don't like, like Pastor Pelt said, we, we, we have a, we have an attachment and an allegiance, but we also, you know, if we're going to go else place and get the word and you're going to have to at least, you know, have an attachment to that church as well, even though you're online, because some of the online churches that I go, that I, that I look at, I still send them a couple of bucks and this and that, which takes away from my church. So we, we, we have to think about things like that as well. And I just think that the transparency in the word, and I think the leadership is different. The leadership is very different nowadays. Um, it's more based on protecting the ministry instead of, the, the, the full body of the church, so to speak. So I, I heard you mention, uh, and I'm getting a little feedback. You might want to turn your, your volume down a little bit. I don't, I'm not sure which one it is, but um, 
I heard you mention about uh, funds. And I want to pose this question to everyone. I mean, everyone. Uh, what are your thoughts on the church? Uh, and, I, I, and, and it's not my thought. This is, this is people that has talked to me. They've talked to my brother. They've talked to my dad. They've talked to all of you, I'm pretty sure, about uh, funding. Uh, and a lot of people figure, you know, they, they feel that the church is a business and they only want your money. So what do you all have to say to that? And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears because we hear this all the time now. At the end of the day, the church is a business. They only want your money. So uh, anybody who wants to respond, Pastor Honor, Pastor Pelt, uh, what do you say to this? We keep, we hear some feedback. Do anyone have like a, a someone around them have a phone on? You have uh, your phone volume you're listening to the, the broadcast near them with the phone on because we're hearing some feedback. Yeah. Let me jump in this. You know, one, one of the things I, I will say, I, I concur with everything that's been said. One, one of the jobs of a pastor is to be not only a proclaimer of the word, but a practice of the word. And many times uh, it is felt that in our context, and I'll say black context, is that many times we don't have people who practice and, and proclaim the word. That even they proclaim the word and then they don't practice it. So that, that creates a whole situation. I think the other thing that, that comes up, and I would say, and I, and I say this real carefully because, because I, I do believe that some people don't like to talk about structural differences in ministry. It would be the same with talking about an elementary school, a middle school, and a high school. Every church does not have the same structure, though they may have the same goal, they don't all have the same supply to do to that goal. And so I never judge a church even on finances. I do judge them on their fruit. Because I realize that many times a church of a few is doing more than a church of many. And they may not have the finances. I think the other thing that I, that I always tell people is that one of the things when it comes to finances we found is that generations are not giving the same. So let's just talk generational. And let's just let's use Deerfield. Every church in Deerfield, for the most part, was built by people older or gone. And if it were to be destroyed too bad, it could not be rebuilt with the finances of us. Because we're not going to give it like that. They gave the land. They gave the labor because they had a love. This generation says, I give, I give my, my skills because you have given me some type of service. And if you don't give me that service, I don't give you my skills. And so to my, to my dear sister, Sister Gail, I would say, I, I know that church, great church. Yes, yeah, yeah. but I would, but I would challenge anybody at that church to say, "Now listen, uh -huh. to those who are new, do you give what those who built this church gave?" And so, and because they have people who give way up and above, those who give one dollar get the benefit of the way and above. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. My thing to those folks is nobody says, "Now listen again." This is what I need. Nobody says anything about how the pastor lives, where he lives, what he drives, what he does. I just know this much. If I go out and get a new car, I better make sure that everybody knows that I got it from, from something uh, other than maybe church money because I didn't took church money to get a new car. And I always tell this generation this. I think somebody said, keep the line in the line. If the line is that all we want is money, then guess what? All they want is money. Because here's the truth of the matter. All of us do need funds right. to move the church forward. I just say that one of the things we have come to do, it is a true thing. Our generation gives far less than the previous generation. If you, per capital, we give less, and yet we have the ability to give more. 
because we put restrictions on the church that the old saints did. They said, it's God's money, it's God's will, it's God's way. Now, let me let me put my last card in, I'm done. I have no problem with being analyzed. I have no problem with being scrutinized. I just tell everybody, let's all participate equally so that when you see a church doing well, we don't drag them down. Because that's one thing I say on our side is a bad guy on my side of the track ruins all of us on my side of the track. They can have a controversy over there. Uh, Bob, and listen, I don't have a problem saying Bob Cohen was at a flat foot of Dolce's affair. And Calvary Chapel is skip a beat. Let Pastor Pet have a girlfriend. Ain't, I ain't got no church next week. Ain't, ain't got nobody to come to church next week. And and I said, I don't, they were the one that they were the player from the game. That's another reason why our church is empty. Because scandals hurt us. Scandals don't seem to take you. Okay. Okay. I believe that's Gail, but to put your uh, push back on that though. What, what I would say about the, the the giving and those who built the church, a lot of those who built the church in earlier days were business owners and and people who who had the money. That's why they built the churches. But nowadays, a lot of people that are in the churches aren't business owners. We're just hard working people. So I think the demographics of the giving is a little different because when I was coming up, I I, I know. Uh, older people who are business owners that were in my church that literally gave their life to the church, gave their business earnings to the church. I grew up under uh, P.H. Burns. I'm not sure if you are. And I could probably say he, he gave his earnings, his life to that church, his, his total earnings. And he was a great business owner. And a lot of us today are just hard working class people. So we don't, I think the giving is, uh, I would say, different. And you don't have a lot of in my church, I would say we don't have a lot of business owners. So I would say the given in the demographics of that in the smaller churches might be different than the larger church. And we and we get this all the time. You know, we talk to people just like you all talk to people, the same people that you talk to. And we ask these questions. Oh, what, what, why do you think that the church is empty? And the majority of the people always come back and say they only want your money. You know, you give money and they turn around, they begging for money again. They always got the hand out. And I also say, you know what? Well, the church has to operate. You know, they have they have a light bill. They have a, a, a Internet bill. If you want to get live stream, you got to have a good Internet. You know, you can't go with a little janky Internet service. You can't you can't go with uh, uh, you, you have a water bill. I mean, people are using the bathroom and flushing the toilets and everything. And, you know, you have have all kind of things that, you know, the um, overhead that has to be paid. But and, and, and they have all kind of reason. They say, you know, the pastor's always driving the nice cars and we driving a whip around here. You know, we driving a little hoop deal, a slider. You know, they got good cars. Every time the church needs us. They come to us for money, but when we need the money, the church tells us to call to ask God for it. Right. So I mean, you I lot. mean, you hear a lot. I mean, I, I, how, how do you all respond to that? Did anybody ever anybody heard that? Jump in. I mean, yes. jump in on this. Yes. I mean, yes. I mean, we we yes. talk off camera. I mean, Darryl, on, jump in on it. Daryl, can I say something? Sure, go ahead. My, I still go back to this. Um, when you teach people how to give, it's not an issue. We, we, I don't know, we just fail to give them biblical principles because in my church, there's not an issue with giving because they've been taught how to give, the reason for giving, why we give. And that's why I say a lot. A lot of it is a lot of misunderstanding. They just don't know. You have, it's like going to school. You go to school to learn to be a doctor. If that, if that professor don't teach you, you, you would never be a doctor. Sometimes it's just take proper teaching because I truly believe in my heart because I'm in a church where giving is not an issue. Um, if they know the fundamentals of giving, I don't think it'll be a whole problem. So you think it's fundamentals and, and, yes. and teaching? Yes. yes. I, let, me, let me say this here too, as far as <clears throat> my understanding of, of just listening to people on the internet i i ventured even on the internet to find out why uh 
attendance was down at churches. Some of the things that I saw was that the younger generation doesn't feel like they're being accepted in a church environment. Uh, some of the other things were that uh, some of the members in this church seem too judgmental and hypocritical. So that's what a lot of young folks were uh, saying and complaining about. And then the young people, I hear this all the time in every church uh, from different people that where the young people just don't feel like their voice is being heard. Anybody can can touch on anything. Pastor Anna, I'd like to start with you on that. Because most churches have youth, youth, youth uh, choirs and and then like when I our, our, our church we have uh uh RAAC. Uh those are the youth that 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 you know they they're on the program for a certain one on uh, one Sunday out of out of the month. So I mean touch on it Pastor Anna. Talk to us about it. Well um just listening to um, each one that is speaking. And even as Pastor Pep said, every, every situation is different. Um, um, because one thing I hear as a pastor a lot of times, um, if we didn't have to pay this, then we could give more to, to, to support our home church or, you know, or, or this and that. So the point of, as Sister Gail was saying, teaching, it's not a problem with teaching folk to give. It's the problem of, having, of them staying committed to give. See? Because again, even in the midst of your giving, are you giving as God say bring to the storehouse? Or are you giving because you bringing it to the church? But what about people on, on fixed income, though? I just wanted to say Everybody's that. on fixed income. Please tell me one person that is not on fixed income. Everybody. Well, I know people with two or three jobs. And so. taxes. They pay taxes. If they go past what that tax say, that tax going to eat them up and get them. So everybody's on a fixed income. See, I think where we a lot of times roll into situation is we make excuses but don't want to accept the excuses because again we all know doc that uh if you're only if your job says you're only required to make x amount of dollars a year and you go over that puts you in a higher tax bracket and they gonna get every penny back see uh so so when when you look at it okay just like people sit and say, we paying that pastor all that money and, and he ain't he or she ain't teaching us nothing. No one, and this is psychological, no one will ever learn anything they don't want to learn. Because everything you ought to be able to get a nugget from. Just as my brother said, he has read the entire Bible four times from front to back. And I guarantee you, every time he's read it, he's had something different to come into his thought. And that's why the Lord said, well, in all you're getting, get understanding first. See, so when we look at it, I'm posing this question, not really looking for an answer, but I'm posing this question. Was the church built to change us? Or were we created to change the church? <laughs> Anyone can Deron, answer that. Deron, Deron. You, had, you had your hand up. Go ahead, Deron. Okay, well, and a lot of people Gail are talking about giving Evelyn. and tithing, okay? Now, Pastor Honor just said, every time I read the book, I got something different. I didn't say that. What I was saying was, every time I read the book, I was enlightened more, so I gained. No, no, more. I, I wasn't. I wasn't speaking to the point that you actually got something different because I know you can read. You can read a verse, and it's something in that verse that may stand out this time that didn't stand out the last Correct. time. Correct. Correct. Yeah, I'm not saying you got something different to okay. the point. Yeah. Okay, but um, I I re also read that we could all agree if those who reading 
and um, studying as we supposed to, that there were tribes in the Bible. Um, and then you have the Leviticus high priests that were high priests that wasn't allowed to work. So the other tribes were ordained to bring 10% to the storehouse to take care of the high priest. Okay. The high priest, they lost their priesthood because we, we, we spiritually hoard against God over and over and over again. So we Levit, the Leviticus high priest lost their priesthood. Therefore tithing, we don't do that anymore. But if a church do want to receive offering, and the people give offering. That's fine. But I don't agree with the whole tithing situation because from what God has said in his book that the Leviticus high priests are done until he restore them back. And that's towards the end of the times where we continue to proceed and we continue to live. So yes, does a church have need money to run? Yes. That's 110% and that's granted. Yes. But a lot of people are starting to, a lot of churches are pushing the whole tithing scenario and pushing that heavy. They'll tithe and then they'll come around again with the offering. And that's when people are starting to feel raw because a lot of people are starting to read and say, yo, this is not really adding up. What's going on? And once you start to lose the faith of your congregation, you're going to start to lose. So I think that's what most churches, churches need to come back to the, the word of God, the original word of God, the, uh, the, the, the original word of God and do what he says and let him pan everything out. You know, we do know funds is necessary to keep the lights on, keep live streaming on and do what's necessary. Um, but that's what we have to do. Also incorporate activities. You know, involve the youth. Don't wait until holidays come around. Yes. Do fa do father events, fathers and children mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till Father's Day. Do mother and family events. Don't wait till no holidays. Just do it because it's in the kindness of your heart. And that's what God wants. That's what we need to do. We need to come together and start doing these things just because the feeling it gives us of being together. Not wait until these holidays uh, drive us into these moments. No, we need to just do this because that's what God desires and that's what he wants for us. That's very well said, um, Deron. And, and, and we talk all the time, you know, and, and he teaches me things, you know. And I, I'm one of the ones, I'll be the first one to tell you, I've never read the Bible from the, from the front to the back. You know how most people, we go and pick and choose whatever verses we want out of the Bible and that's what we use. I'm one of them. I'm, I, I admit to that. I need, and I've told Deron this, I say, I need to sit down and make time because I made time for everything else. I need to read that Bible from the front to the back. I would like to read it four times like him, but I haven't gotten around to that yet, but it is in my plan, you know, to do that. And what, I mean, and as far as when we were talking about that, that what about the transparency? Today, people want to know more about where, where, their, where their money and their givings are going. So yeah. uh, people want, and every and we hear this a lot too, about transparency. I mean, what what are your thoughts, Pastor Phil? Uh, uh, Desmond, let's get, go back to Desmond. Desmond, can you hear us? Yes, sir. What, what, what are your thoughts about uh, 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 transparency? Uh, well, I think the brother Deron hit it kind of right on head because a lot of times what I tell people, we, we always give, you know, and and I and I'll be honest. What 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 itches me as a young man, forty five, my age, and a lot of my age group, when we hear, you know, your blessing is tied to your, is tied to your giving, and that can be, you know, that that's <laughs> that's not transparency, and that's not what I mean. What the Bible teaches, you know, um, true enough, we need money to operate these churches but as the brother said you know and as, as miss gail said it's the teaching because you know we the, the bible doesn't teach us about tithing and and and, and offering and it, it, it in today's world that's not 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 even today's world that's just not what the bible is talking about and 
I just think that we have to be more transparent with what the Bible is actually saying or not saying. And like the pastor said, making excuses for our churches and why we are operating the way we should is because, you know, truth be told, we're not as connected as we should be. You know, we say we need funds to build a church, but if we the people are the church, why do we need funds? So I, I think when we talk about funds and the church, I think we, we have to really take a look at how we teach and preach that because as the brother said, you can end up running a whole slew of people away with that if you're not teaching and preaching the right thing, you know. Of course, you want to teach people to give and to support the entity that they're getting their knowledge from, but at the same time, like I say, everybody doesn't have the money to give or, you know, even if people do have the money to give or people have families or whatever the case may be, I think people see the whole money thing as totally different than others see it because well, I the think the, the denominational, it can be different. Denominational, it can be different because I'm an AME and y'all know how the AME story goes and what we have to do with the money for the AMEs and how we have to, you know, support this and support that and say this and say that. And, you know, a lot of times we can't do what we need to do within our church because we have to do other things with the finances. And so when people see things like that, I think the church itself has to step back and, 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 and be transparent and, and have and, 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 and humble itself. You know, we can't always look to the people to say, well, they're making excuses or this or that or that or this, and, or they don't know, they don't know, or they don't know how to tie, or, you know, this thing like that. We just have to, you know, accept things for what they are and move forward with it. I think your brother said, if you were more connectional, like Pastor Pell, or I mean, not just call Pastor Pell, but so Pastor Pell and Pastor Donald would get together and we would have a you know, a kickball game out at the park every month and, you know, turn and, and, and do some fun. So, you know, you have to do things like that. That's why I say sometimes it's, you know, you can't just say, well, people ain't giving out of their pocket. You have to create things that generate funds and, you know, make people want to give and, you know, happy to give. You know, right. you right. can't just expect people to come and hear a word and, 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 and give money. So I'm hearing that the church needs to be more creative is what you what I'm hearing from uh, some of our panelists here that the church can be more creative in, in, in what they're doing to get the youth in the church and, and be more creative in uh, ways to bring money into the church. Evelyn, I saw you had your yes. hand up. I mean, how, us, um, uh, how, how do you respond to me? That? You're killing me. Um, I'm just going to say what works for me. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Um, when I was little at church, there were very few people that tithe. Back then, they paid church dues. Very few people tithe. It's just in these later years where tithing was fully implemented. Um, I believe that tithing has to be taught. You got to be taught to tithe. That's the key. Me, me and my good sense, I'm gonna give you this, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm gonna do it on a consistent basis, regardless. I'm gonna give you that 10%. I might need 30% on top of that 10%, but I'm gonna give you that 10% and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, eat into the hole. No, it's got to be taught. Yes. It's got to be taught. And it's got to be faith based. Yes. For me right now, my uh -huh. God, but in anything, right. I know, anything I know. And it's personal for me. It's got to be on a personal level. Yes. I've had to experience personal things uh -huh. to get me there. To make me understand it. He promised me he wasn't going to leave me nor forsake me. And I got to believe that. Wholeheartedly. 
wholeheartedly. But it's got to be taught. Exactly. That, that's something that we don't do. We don't teach. Enough. Yeah, you know, we might say it. You know, you might say it. You might say it 10 times. But I, it's got to be taught. I, it, I, 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 I definitely hear you, um, Sister Price. Um, but I also believe, too, though, that in the midst of teaching, I can teach or anybody, you, anyone, can teach tithing every day. But until a person wants to accept it. I agree. You got to want. They are not going to change it. I mean, if I could, just, 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 just for a brief moment. Um we're talking about tithing, we're talking about giving. In the older days coming up, okay, um, people's tithing was also geared towards their talent. I agree. Mama, daddy, granddaddy, whoever, if the church needed a musician, they would go and play and charge nothing. Now you got to play somebody to play, you got to pay somebody to direct, you got to pay somebody for this. You got to pay somebody for that. So we are now in a time period that things have changed, that everything has to be paid for. And so when we look at the point of giving, okay, even if you don't do as Malik Malachi says, give your 10% and you give your offering, there is nothing, even to the point of paying light, water, uh, things of the church, that putting a dollar on that table is going to take care of. So even in the midst of teaching, it's just like going to school. Each teacher teach you something. It's up to you to obtain it. And it's up to you to perfect it. And one thing I've learned, you can't have the old covenant without the new covenant. I mean, you can't have the new covenant without the old covenant. So you can't put part of the Bible away and pick up this part. I agree. Because it all joins together. So when you look at it, how many cakes, how many pies, your mama price baked and sold just to keep the lights on, just to keep the water on. See, but nowadays those things are not important. See, so where do we go? As, as the song said, take me back to where I first believed, I first received. See, so now what happens? We want things the way we want them. And a lot of times they say, say, God is not even a part of it. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. A lot of it is that we want to we wanna take things of the world and we, we want to wrap it up and stir it up with things of the church. And we can. You can. Uh -huh. when, when do you take a stand on it? win let me say one thing too but don't you think as far as i'm looking for a solution too don't you think as far as uh getting people to come back to church don't you think the congregations that i see are a lot of the elderly people are leaving us now some can't some can come to church some can't so is it wouldn't it be more ideal to try to reach to the younger people that's coming uh yes. to church i know pastor pelt has a i always noticed that his church and visiting there times before I always noticed he had a very young crowd uh that's pretty much my age and i'm quite sure younger now but isn't the solution one of the solutions is reaching out to the youth to the youth to the younger people the younger. i mean to the 40 and on the uh, group. I know we can sit here and we can give biblical uh, uh, terms and all day about why the people and why they're not paying this. And 
but I'm looking for a solution going forward to 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 what is the solution to getting those people in in in, a, in, in layman terms and right. common sense, humanly terms. I see you, Grammys and Pastor Pell. Go ahead. Gail said something that, that is true. Now I just have to see this. The, the church, the job of the church, right. However, in representing Christ, we go out into the world. So, so one of the things that, that people just know about me, I have never been afraid. I have a little statement. I'm never afraid of anybody walking through the door because God wants the church to be someone who feels they can walk through the door. So part of, part of going out is our job. The second part is then we make disciples. Then we, we take the time to teach people because when people come in, they come in from what they come in from. And you teach them the word. And part of teaching them the word is the process of giving. The first thing we ask everyone to give is their life back to God. That's his life. Everybody on this call, you don't own your life. That's his life. So we first say, give your life back to him. And in giving your life back to him, guess what you have to give him automatically? Any gift he gave you. Any means he gave to you to prosper in your life. You now got to say, since you got my life, Lord, you get that back. And in getting that gift, I now receive gifts from my gifts. And God, I gladly give gifts back to you from the gifts you gave me. Now, the issue that came up talking about why people don't come, so first off, we don't, we just need to be honest sometimes. Church is hard work. Salvation mm -hmm. is messy work. My, my daughter just, my daughter-in-law just had a, had, a, had a baby. And I thought about it, I said, man, I'm, Whoever, whoever the baby nurses are, they got one of the worst jobs in the whole house. They bring in new life, but that is a messy process. And a part of the reason we don't want people, the church is not growing is we don't want to get messy. Everybody comes to church with some. And let's just be real. I've said it publicly from the pulpit. The day I find out what that something is, I have to make a decision. Man. See, I'm tell you what I, see back in the day, so this is where I get now. Back in the day, if you was a smoker, you was a drinker. We say that's bad, but you know we, we can deal with that. Okay, so then the church, the church big sin was fornication. Okay, you shouldn't be shacking up. Well, guess what? We we kind of got past that. A couple months ago, man, I had somebody who was a full fledged guy dressed like a girl from the church. I'm like, great, ain't that? Wait a minute, Woo. You can't be who's so well, who's so well let him come. If you want to, because God, Jesus never had a clean crowd with him. The whole time he walked, everybody was walking dirty. Now, he got him delivered. That's all he did to that. This generation, he never let him stay dirty. But he understood that if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw all men into me. All of them. And so every Sunday I make this, this so this past few Sundays I've been saying, to any young lady out there who's pregnant and the joker done walked off, come to Radiant Living Worship Center. We're going to figure out a way to help you raise that child. Now, the moment I make that statement, somebody got to help. Formula, ain't cheap. We ain't got no cows. We ain't got no cows around there. Diapers ain't, ain't cheap. And so somebody's got to fund that. Which means we who have the ability, whether you want to call it tithe, we will offer it, sacrificial giving, whatever you want to call it, we must do it at a certain level so that we can be of service to them. And the reason I make that point is because then I also set the mouth for those who say the church don't ever do that for nobody. So I'm gonna say to Professor Arnold K. Say y'all, y'all, y'all hear me? So I don't think I got no members on here. But I have one major problem when it comes to transparency. If you don't participate in giving, you should not. You know, you should you should have a political statement at the giving moments. People are, but I, I give my money. Do you know how much Nike spent on your shoes? No. You know, you know how much Wendy Dixon paid for that avocado? No. Do you, do you know how much a person in the bag that's bagging the avocado at uh, Walmart makes? No. And I always tell people this if you're going to be a believer, you got to be a believer all across the board. I, I said earlier, if the line is the line, it's the line. So if you're going to be involved, then you got to be involved. And some people, the matter of fact, I was going to go scripture. In the book, I think it's Book of Mark. Jesus comes up on a, on a rich young ruler. The, the, the young fellow is perplexed that he looks religious, and Jesus hits him with hurts. He says, "Young man, give all your stuff to the poor, 
And we, most people try to read that way that Jesus was telling them, hold some. Jesus wasn't telling them to hold none because every disciple he came to, he said, leave it all and follow me. The Bible says, of all the people in the Bible, that young man could not do it because he had much possessions. And I tell people the reason people don't want to give in church is because we love our possessions more than we love the God who gave us the possessions. Somehow we feel that if I give my money to a church, God won't bless me. And so we do have to have activities. And we have to have these activities so you want to be involved. But I always tell people, we shouldn't have to have all these activities. Because if you are giving, you, if, if you want to give, I told people, if you want to give, give it. But I'd ask people on this, on this call, how many people have we given to and given to where they know it hurt? How many people have we, have we invited to church? How many people have, I, I'll give this brother um, this is tough because he's like he, he doing something with you, Brother Adam. How many times have you sat down and, and answered a question from starting who just got a question? And if it comes down to giving, Bishop Pell does not make all the money in the world. My church, I am so grateful for. I have one job, that's to lift up Jesus. And if I lift up Jesus, we'll touch the hearts of people every Sunday to give. I tell people often, I don't have no secret life, I don't have no secret wife. I have a sacred charge. And when people see you just being real, yeah, listen, I have, I've been three kids through college, trust in God. I got two grandbabies, trust in God. Listen, we're trying to do some stuff in the, in the city of Deerfield, trust in God. And I challenge you, those of you who may be watching this, you may come back at this and say, yeah, what was the purpose of this? The church ain't done you no wrong. God has done you no wrong. You don't have to leave church. There's always room for you in church. And can I tell you something? Why there's room for you in church? Because God needs you to help us win this world. So to anybody, I believe in my dear brother, Dr. Arnold will do a great job. But if you got a question, we got a Christ who is the answer. And I promise you, in him, you can live, move, and have your being. I'm sorry, I kind of went Pentecost to preach on that point, but I do want no, to. No, you, 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 you brought up a good point, sir, yes, uh, yes. because um, as you were talking, and I'm sorry, um, Brother Adams, but a, a, as you were talking, it just came to my mind and my thought that one of the reasons why two uh, our churches are empty is because we're not hearing from God, we're hearing from people. And when we begin to hear from people, uh, our mind, believe it or not, our mind has been trained and taught. The first stage is to go to the negative side. And when you go to the negative side, it takes you time to come back. So when you, when you breathe out, you're going to always breathe out negative first. And so when you look at it in a sense, um, man, man, I tell you, uh, I, I love going to this church. I enjoy, I get so much out of the church. Yeah, but have you heard? Say, now I'm in your ear. See, just like when, 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 when Jesus told Adam, don't eat from the tree. But then Eve, when it told him the reason why he don't want you to eat from the tree because you'll be just as smart as him. See, so we have to understand that if I am truly committed and I have truly been born again, I, I let nothing stop me from serving God. See, because guess what? If, if, if your church talking about God, my church talking about God, everybody here at church, talk, we talking about the same man. And if we all talking about the same man, why do you feel like there's more God over here than it is over there. It, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with who you listening to. Hey, Gail McFadden, what do you think about the, what do you think about like here in Deerfield, we have probably, I, I'm, I'm gonna just throw a rough number out there and say uh, 40 churches, 30 churches. What do, you, do you think, what do you think, do you think that <laughs> contribute to a lot of churches being empty too that we have so many churches in this just one little general area. I like Gail, I'd like for you to expand on that. What I what I think is the the 
the new generation, they're not coming because it's boring. If your church is still doing what you did a hundred years ago, we we on iPhone number 14. <laughs> yeah. And you still doing what you did a hundred years ago, the new generation ain't coming. Somehow, some we don't even have reefer. We got crack cocaine, we got um oh, what are all these pills they pop in? Fentanyl and yes. uh some of the everything. Devil, <laughs> the devil tools are increasing. The church is standing still. Somehow, some way, we got to come up with some. The word, the word doesn't change. The word stays the same. But we got to get as crafty as the devil. Somehow, you got to let you got to build these people faith. A lot of people don't have faith in the church anymore because nothing new is going on. I had a guy come to my house, and you know, I, I mentor a lot of young guys, and I asked them about church, and the majority of them say we don't believe all that BS. We don't believe it. One guy said, I got robbed. He came here to the, to the candy store and I thought somebody actually robbed him. He said, I was at this man's church. He took up six offerings. <laughs> he said, so I was just like, and I thought it was funny because I actually thought he got robbed. But we have to be, we got to move into the 21st century in our churches. Let me These young this. people. It, it, house rated, we don't pass the plate. We just ask that you don't pass the plate anywhere. That's all we have. We don't pass the <laughs> But the, the, these new ge new new generation of young people want transparency. They yes. they they want to see what you're doing with the money. They want to know what what you're doing. Are, are you helping the poor? What are programs? you going to the jailhouse? Are you visiting the homeless shelter? These this new generation of of people is just not like how we were when we when we grew up. We have to accept right. that because they're not coming to church because nothing has changed. You're still singing the same old songs. You're still saying the same old scriptures. They don't feel like they have to come because it's the same old, same old. Right. Let's do something new. Let's do something different. Because right. if not, this generation, they ain't coming because right. they'll go see Beyonce because Beyonce got a new dance step every concert she comes to. It's going to be something new. She's going to bring, bring them something create, cr creative. She's going to have new songs. She's going to have new music. And your church is still doing what you did 100 years ago. So I'm here and bring something new. Be yes. more create and be more creative and and teach. And Those be, are the yes. things I'm hearing. Be teach. bring and something down. Be more That's creative it. and teach. So That's so it. so what would you what would you suggest, Sister Gail, that mm -hmm. um churches do different and new and still stay? Uh, because uh, uh Bishop Pep said it earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. First, we need to the, go. The layman, to... the layman, uh -huh. the layman can go out and do everything, but the pastor better not do it. Right. See, so how do we, how, you know, because uh, matter of fact, I'm just going to say it. Uh -huh. uh, during the time we had to shut down for the COVID, uh -huh. okay, we had to shut down because our headquarters said shut down because uh -huh. we're we're governed by a connection. We're not a standalone. We're we're governed by a connectional church. Okay. And and there were some who felt we shouldn't have closed the doors. See, so it, 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 it's just like sitting here saying, well, the way I felt is just like saying, um, don't worry about what they think. Mm -hmm. You know, let's do what we need to do. And then the minute someone get COVID pass away. Then you're looking at a lawsuit. Right. So well, those so, are the people that don't understand the structure of the church. So mm -hmm. maybe if they understood the structure right. Right. of the right. church, maybe they yes. would understand why the church wasn't open during COVID. So how do we get these people to understand the stru structure of the church, the AME well, church or the Pentecostal well, church or the or the non-denominational church? How how do we get these people to understand the structure? And, and first, well, first, I first, I think we like to the answer. <laughs> The hmm? question that you had posed there, Pastor Anna. Oh, okay. The question of how do what where do we start from? Yeah, yeah what, what, uh, what do we do? What what do we do to change things when you know when when yeah. you are sitting in a in in a, in a position that mm -hmm. you can't you 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 can't or you're not allowed to, See, to... Uh, well well in my in my case we were already live streaming before COVID hit, maybe five, six, eight years before um, live, live stream hit 
the, the mainstream. My church, you could always watch online. So that's another difference. But we we gonna have to start more, I would say teaching, going, going just walking around in your community and inviting people to come to church, um, doing Bible studies at church, having members invite people to come out because this generation, they wanna learn. They wanna know what, what they're shouting about. They wanna know why they're coming to church because a lot of them don't believe the way we believe. Me, it, it was simple. I was at Bible Way Temple. Um, we were taught, like Evelyn Price said, to come to church, to go to church. Now, this generation want to know why they come into church. We, we, we went because we knew our parents were going to probably spank our butts or That's right. you were, something, something drastic would happen. This new generation, they want to know why they're coming. And they, you better be able to give them some information to keep them wanting to come. Because if not, they're not coming. And I know a lot of it is tradition. Tradition is killing our churches. It's killing it. Because even the young guys that I minister to that come to the house, I mean, one went to this christening and he was there with his friend, with the baby. And the pastor was given a testimony about being blessed and, and they sold into this and he sold into that and he got a blessing. The first thing he reached over and said, you believe yep. that S-H-I-T? Nothing that pastor said that young fella believed. He say it's BS. They just doing it to get your money. Um, they give you little, little, um, how would you put little things to make you want to give. And he was a young get a young fella because that generation, they just don't believe. They don't. You got to give them something to make them believe. They're not going to believe you. You can't, you can't say, oh, I sold and gave this person a thousand dollars and my life stayed on. To them, that's BS. Well, let, me, let, me, let me just rebuke that. I, I was just going to hear that and I just go, man, that's just not true. I don't care what everybody says. Don't let fool you. This generation uh -huh. wants stability. Okay. This brother, brother uh, Grissom over here, flat out calling us out on eating the same Bible four, four times. He said he read a different version. Some of them tell him he's a fool for reading the Bible. Why would you read a book four times? Because he knows know. that is the rule. That's uh -huh. That's the truth. Nobody's mad at having traditions. Right. What, what we have to hope, the tension that we have today is we must understand there's some things that are truly optimal. So okay. let me do what I, I, I would say that are optimal. Listen, we're under the new covenant. You can go to church any day you want to go to church. You want to go Monday to Friday. Me and my brother may disagree about Saturday. Sabbath is now for me. He made okay. so if, you, if you don't go to church on Saturday, you don't go to church on Sunday. You need to be to church sometime. That's perfect. Right. What's non-negotiable? You need to be worshiping God when you go to work. That's that's non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wear no big cat no more. I think I think we, I like the fact that our culture makes you dress right. up because I just think sometimes we we don't really got a little lax. But you know what? I just come with this this part. as long as we don't come naked and we don't see too much skin, we good. That's right. But we want you to come modestly dressed. That's not mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right? When you come, we may sing at the hymn. We may mm -hmm. sing hill song. We may sing Bethany. And we may sing my one legged song. That's, That's optional. That's good. That's optional. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure that every song we sing about exalts Jesus as the Savior of all mankind. Mm -hmm. Man. That his word and his will has been performed in his death, burial, and resurrection. Can I tell you something? That ain't gonna never change. Right. So so now let me let me get to the stuff that I think that that is up everything. If 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 this generation wants change, uh -huh. they gotta be a part of it. What they can't do is criticize what we're not and then not come alongside of us and help us to become what they want us to be. You, you but you know what, Pastor Pep, I'm gonna give you I'm giving another example. We know that for a fact. But don't you know that social media is a beast? It's a beast. Right. It, unfortunately, it's a beast. I love my foundation. I, I, you know, I love the black church. Mm -hmm. I love it. That is my roots. That's my foundation. But one thing I do know, this new generation, some of the stuff they don't want. It's unfortunate. I, you know, I wish um, somehow we can let them know how the old school did it and how the old school um, rock and roll in church. But these new generation, my age, 30s, 40s, 50s, 
they're leaving the black churches and joining non-denominational churches. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Let's, let's be real about this. And I'll, I'll, uh-huh. I, as a bishop, I stand on this. And this mm-hmm. is not one church is able because there's also a level of starting with there's a attachment, allegiance, and attendance. Mm-hmm. You can be attached and you can have allegiance and not attend and get all the benefits. That's why they come to the church. You come over to church with Brother Adams, guess what? One day we're going to need to clean the church. I can't clean the church today. Okay. But over there, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, and again, I have no disrespect for the guy. Mm-hmm. The guy church by the glaze. They yeah, go, yeah. They go out there and see fireworks in church. And I'm going, if, you know, if that's what it takes to keep you in church. And we don't do all of that. We're Pentecostal, but we're more Pentecostal than um, non-denominational. And so, so, matter of fact, so my point is, every Sunday, a pastor preaches one message. Mm-hmm. Man is born a sinner. There's only one Savior. Mm-hmm. Be born again. And if you come across, we believe that you need the fullness of the Holy Ghost. And, right. And we teach that in my church. Mm-hmm. And guess what? I preach that every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Every Sunday. If you're a Baptist, we they get mad at that formula. But you went to the grave, I want you to Friday. Early Sunday morning, he got up. Folks, that's theology. My yeah. Lord, yes, that's theology. Well, and guess what? It doesn't have to change. And I hit my point to this. When mm-hmm. I go to my non-denominational churches, because I come mm-hmm. to churches. I know. Mm-hmm. They, they may not be telling you the struggles they're having, mm-hmm. but they're telling you mm-hmm. they're having those struggles. They just do it and they can hide it. That's all. Yeah, you know what? And, and, and that's true. Every church has mm-hmm. its problems. It's how you deal with those problems. But one thing I can say, um, the teaching is um, amazing. But I'm going to say this to you again. This don't, uh-huh. uh, but I want to say this to my generation because I want to spend my good time when I know going on heaven. <laughs> you know my partner was hard school, old school holiness. He was, yeah. And I tell anyone in the world, uh-huh. whether you feel this way about us or not, uh-huh. the gospel of the black church is uh-huh. with the country. True. The gospel of the black church. Uh-huh. Is, you you, you want to know another reason why people are in the church of the question. How can the gospel blame this change? And I just said it, and we have let the gospel go for political expediency. Right. And so one of the things I challenge all of us to do is say, listen, I'm with God, and the world may go where it want to go. Right. And that's why I'm, I'm passionately about the African-American experience, because I do believe for all the stuff that people are putting on us that is wrong and that we're excessive and we don't do this, if it were not for the black church, this country would burn up real, real good. Right. And it, and, it, and it was, it was the foundation. I, I agree with you on that. Aspect. It is the foundation. And but I, think, and I, I, I just, listen, my, my brother said, but even the giving was given in a way that they understood. The pastor wasn't trying to get over. No, he wasn't. Mm-hmm. Listen, we have a force. We have, we are affected the community. We're forcing the community. And can I tell you something? I don't care what nobody says. I stand unequivocally, unashamedly, a pastor, a believer, a Holy Ghost filled guy who said that, that if God had not changed my life, I was on my way to hell. I live the life I live now, not because I can't live another life. Mm-hmm. Not another life. It's in Him that I live and I move. Oh, I my baby. If you come on Sunday morning, I'm going to tell a few funnies. That's how you get <laughs> But I'm going to take you to the cross and let you know something. Ain't nothing funny about going to hell. Uh-uh. And because I believe what I believe, the Lord has a promise to me. He'll add to the church name as such as should be saved. We went so, through. So, um, so Pastor Pep and, and Sister Gail, quick question. Uh-huh. Could we also say that the reason why the church is, quote unquote, empty is because we are not abiding by the word of God that says sheep get sheep? I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. Yes, I agree. I okay. agree. Because my, 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 my church is um, the advocate for going in the hedges and the highways. And I, and I know that's part of why the congregation is so large and why we continue adding churches. Because um, nine, maybe about more than 50% of their ministry is done outside the four walls. So you, 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 you want to say something, Duran?
No, nah, I'm, I'm just. Duran, you wanna you wanna add anything to that? Oh. <laughs> I'm just, I'm listening. I mean, everybody, you know, <laughs> these, we, these yeah. pastors remind me of my dad. They remind me of my dad. My dad is a, um, he a hardcore Christian. And he just have his traditions and he believe what he believe. Yeah. Like uh-huh. I and talked to my dad about the Bible and what I have learned and how, you know, United States have January, February, March month. But when you go into the book, you see that God go by his month off the moon, you know, certain sleeves and the waxing the half the full moon signifies a new month so when i when i shared that with my father he was like oh man you crazy man you going but it's right there the word right there you know springtime all the four seasons yeah all that's there god give us everything in that book he teaches all you gotta do is read it he, all you got to do is read it, bro. That's all you got to do. And comprehend what it means. Yeah. And, and look, God That's gave it. us all a brain, so we can comprehend. <laughs> nobody can't comprehend better than nobody. You get on your knees and you pray to God and say, God, help me comprehend this Bible into my right. heart and, 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 and talk to him. He so will do it. He will do it. This, this is a question that I get. This, I, I think this is, a, this is a valid point to you. We need to be able to answer this question. Now, so all I ask this question is, so are we gonna get away with we're gonna put away all the months? We just we're not gonna have any months, we're not gonna have no big no, no no oh sorry, 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 I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, but my point is this is I will I will I appreciate that. But I always tell people that when you get new knowledge, it doesn't stop stop the fact that God is like I said, that's optional God. We said all of that was shadows. All of all of that was the point of the heavens were doing what to declare the glory of God. I don't listen. I don't believe I, I'm almost too bold. I'm like, you know, it's right. But I do like my birthday gift, so I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna stop saying y'all. You can give me my birthday gift, 17. But you know, I go somewhere. I said a couple of weeks ago, someone asked me about the issue of the flag. They said, Chief, that's a special issue to salute the flag. And I'm like, I haven't thought about it in a while, but you know, and I said, you know what? So I said, you ought to have to go to God before me, and you know, that might be an idol, and you know, you might have a point. And I said, you know what? But 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 pastor pastor, yeah, we cannot we 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 cannot live in the world and not part, part, participate in some of the things that are. And I'm not saying do, but for instance, you know, the the, the church itself is in the world. I agree. And because the church is in the world, that's why you have. A, a light bill, you have a water bill, you you have this. So you can't take that completely out and, 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 and think that everything is going to be okay. What See, because even when Jesus said what? Be in the world, but, of but the, not of it. Of the world. See, so when we look at it, and and and, and um, Alan Brothers, as your pastor, I, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a demand that uh, we do this again real soon because this. Oh, is it's coming! Good. It's coming back because <laughs> this, 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 this is this, good. It's, this is we, good. We, this is good. We will have a part two. I promise you here in the next couple of weeks. And everything that I've heard here today on this podcast, because we want people want answers, and you all trust me, you all have brought some very, very interesting topics up, it's, you know, everybody. I mean, yeah. what the, the four things that I have gotten from this panel discussion here is the people, the youth want more transparency. Mm-hmm. They want to bring something new to the church, mm-hmm. be more creative mm-hmm. and to teach. Now, if anybody else heard something different than what I just said, you tell me because that's what I heard. More transparency, bring something new to the church, be creative and teach. Can and we do I, that? Can we bring that? Can we get that all <laughs> and put it in one bowl and bring it back to the church? And and I think I think we can do that. On the other hand, and, and and help me if you can. Okay. We cannot bring stuff that we don't want to support ourselves. Yeah. See that that you know, it, it's easy to suggest stuff. But it's another thing to support what you're suggesting. Consistency. Exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. So, you know, and, and and when you look at uh Jehovah Witness, yes, 
They learn what they learn all week. And then when they go out, that's all they're going to talk to you about. They ain't going to get off track. They're going to talk to you about just that. And, 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 and they're going to support what they're saying. See? Amen. But what we do a lot of times is we request stuff and then once it's put in place, mm -hmm. oh, I got something else I got to do so I can't make it today. Right. And with hey, black, let me touch on that when Pastor Arnold finished. Touch on and, that. And with black folk, you cannot let stuff sit. Preach. Too long. Mm -hmm. And expect folk to come back to it. That's why mm -hmm. you can't even cancel Bible study two weeks in a row. And That's expect it. folk to come back. That's right. it. See, so we have to understand mm -hmm. that if we want to have transparency, if we want to have youth, if we want to have a full house of church, of youth, mm -hmm. then we let the youth take charge. But they have to support. Because guess what? If I'm mad with Pastor Pep, there's four or five of my family members mad with him too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna Holy oh, Christ. Expand uh, on we, that. We gonna we're gonna let you um um touch on that, Evelyn, and then uh we're gonna, we gonna I'm, try and wrap I'm it up. For the night. Like, we we got a message out of this now. We 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 brought a message. Uh, here to our viewers today, man. And people are gonna go back and look at this podcast, and they like, man, they talked about some very interesting things. So, Evelyn, Evelyn, sum it up for us, Evelyn. Um, let me go back to um my early me. As long as I remember, my daddy was an officer. He was a steward in church, and. You know, looking back now, I can, I, I'm because I'm big enough to say it, I know he has always had the church's interest, yeah. best interest at heart. Yes, I can yeah. go to my garage right now and find receipts from Deerfield Beast Lumber Company where he went and took his earnings and bought for that church just right on, around the corner from my house. I know he had their best interest at heart. I'm going to say somewhere in there he went about it the wrong way. And I can't say caring too much. And here's what's different for me. I pay my tithes now. If they took it out the back door and set it on fire, that's on them. It ain't... <laughs> <laughs> you ain't finna kill me with that stuff balled up in my heart about what you doing with it why mm -hmm. you do that's on you and your God but that's, that's the way you feel though Evelyn you know a lot of the younger people don't feel uh, that way they want more Darryl, transparency right. though Everybody don't Listen, you're not understanding me you're not or you're not letting me get I, to I, the I'm point. hearing you I'm hearing you I fix so don't you. leave the youth out of this either now if I fix you dinner and I don't season nothing. <laughs> some cake, I some of that cake, go ahead. You ain't gonna want it. <laughs> Over right. some time, you gonna want some seasoning on it. Yeah. And you ain't just born with seasoning all over you. Yeah. You got to True. get it. True. I love the way you, you put that. It. If, if, if my parents had never said to me, Negro, you going to church, I forgot God only knows where I would be. Amen. But because Bless it you. made me, I can, I'm telling you, I can say I don't feel like going to church. Yeah. And I, I stayed home one Sunday, and I'm like, what did I stay at home for? I ain't nothing on TV, no nothing. And over time, it turned into me like I felt like I was retarded if I didn't go to church. Yeah. It, it, oh, Evelyn, 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 that's, that's our that's, generation. That's our yeah. generation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. New generation don't feel that way. Yeah. They can miss church 10, 15 we, years. We dropped the ball yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah. see, the reason too, though, is the reason why they feel that way a lot of times is because we have opened up the door to allow them to have their opinion. And I'm not saying it's wrong. 
So don't go down that road thinking it's wrong. Y'all drop, y'all okay. drop it. But Thanks. but <laughs> but in re, in reality, in reality, if I pay my light bill and I go and see my lights off, I know they didn't do what they were supposed to do with my money. But if I pay my light bill and my lights on, I'm not going to question it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so when I look at it, is it going to really, and, and, and please y'all don't take this wrong. How well, let me ask you this. How much of a difference will your giving increase if I let you know where every penny went? I don't want to know. Desmond, touch on that, Desmond. I got peace of mind. <laughs> touch on what Pastor Anna said, Desmond. Don't let every, everybody don't think that way, Evelyn. It's unfortunate they don't. It now, can you say that one more time, Pastor? Can you say it one more time? If I was to let let you know where every penny went, how mm -hmm. much would it increase on your giving? Oh, it would increase greatly. Why? <laughs> um, transparency. Yeah, to be honest, because it's, it's, like you said, it's, it's transparency. It's, it's, I know where my money's going and I know what's being done with it. That's all. I mean, simple as that. Like, simple as that. Right. Okay, so, yeah, but, but, we so say, yeah. we, but we say we often say we're giving to God, but in actuality, we're giving to the need of the church. I mean, it, it's 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 such a thin line that we we be talking about here. Yeah, um, well, that's true. Yeah. But 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 in reality, because if I, I know if I know that I'm giving, okay, I say I'm giving to God or I'm giving to the church. And I walk in there on Sunday and the lights not on, the air not on. Then I got some questions. Yes, but, sir. Once, yeah. but once I have been transformed by the renewing of my mind, then it brings me to where Evelyn said, I'm bringing it to you. Now, what you do with it? But our God wouldn't have us to be a fool either now. Can I say, well, Darryl, can I say something? Soft as a dove and yeah, wise as a snake. Right. Can I just say this? I mean, we have to understand. I mean, this this age group that I'm on here with, right? And I think Brother just said we have to understand how do we bridge this gap because we're right. saying is is it's the it's the way we teach it and the way we preach it. And mm -hmm. I think you and Pastor Pell are saying it's how we believe, and it's, we got to get back to how we make people believe. And if I can't give money to you and you be transparent with me. Uh -huh. How can I believe you? You have to be transparent in what I'm giving you for me to believe. Well, you can't I, just say, I, can, give I, I, can I say something? I, I, We're going to go to you, Deron, next. Okay, okay no. Uh, then, yeah. you, you can't just say, give with a blind eye, you know. So we have to, I mean, Pastor Pell, like you said, Pastor Pell has a nice younger crowd. So I would ask yes. Pastor Pell, how do we bridge that gap between the younger school? even in theology, have somewhat of a different idea. Because if we be honest about it, in Christianity, there's many ideologies. I mean, so we, we, we have to understand we all not the same Christian. Yeah, that word Christian, I mean, sometimes gets us in trouble. Pastor Pell, so, then Gail. Let me, let me just say, because I know Brother uh, Darrell had a question. This, well, he, this part of my job is, part of my job is the Bible said, I must be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies between me. I'm a good with gentleman to respect. So I have I never have a problem with someone having a question. Now, the, the, the only thing I can do, I, I, I treat my answer just like y'all say how money is. I can give you the answer. I have to trust you to give it, but to take it. You can say, well, I don't believe it. And, and I'm I'm at that point stuck. I, th I think when it comes to giving, giving is one of the actual faith moments for everybody on this Zoom. At some point, you got to either trust God to give me the strength to make wealth. Then I got to trust God that the strength you gave me, you gave me a sound mind to give some of this money back to your work. And I got to believe by faith that you have put me in with a community of people that are not going to destroy your seed or waste your seed. Right. That's that's I mean that's that's the act of faith. Every Sunday you come every day. This this is good Sunday. Every day you move. You move in utter faith. You don't know what's going to happen. 
I got on the airplane. Right. I got on the airplane, yes, to, to fly or not. But I, I paid my money, I got on, yes, and I was straight faced. So my point is, I have no problem with it. Now, I will say this, this and, I, and I want to hear brother. I want to ask you this question. Let's just talk to me. If, if the issue is, I need to see how much money was raised every Sunday. Here's the one problem I come up with. You assume everybody's giving like you. And unfortunately, we have a lot of liars in church. They see bodies and they assume everybody is giving the same bucks. Yeah, that's not true. No. And so, so what I can tell people, everybody has to be given in the right spirit. Because one of the things that keeps all of this up is, y'all don't trust nobody. Listen, again, let's just, just talk with you. Everybody on this call is very careful how you give your money at church. Because if you're, if you're a true tither, as, as we call it, a 10 percent you went and you put your money on that plate, you were saying what you got that week. And everybody going, they don't even know how much money I make. <laughs> so, so, so you ain't so, so I don't like people. I like to move the number right. It's like this, like this, like this. Listen, that is not, God ain't lying to sit around going, if, if you make $250, you, don't, you didn't get 25, he gonna get you? No, he's telling you, listen, all 250 belong to me. And I always ask people is, and relates to coming to church, giving in church, and participating in church. If you're serious about church, and you're serious about the community, and you're serious about what you want the church to do in the community, we're going to need you personally, we're going to need you financially, and we're going to need you consistently. And if we don't get you in those three things, guess what? Our church will be empty. And what you'll do is you'll sit around and go and say, my church is empty. And we're going to pass them and say, well, how many meetings did you go to? How many people did you invite? How many times did the young people need to go on a, on a field trip? Did you get on, on the bus to go with them? How many? That's where the break yeah. And so, so all I say to people is, I don't have a problem with conversation, but if we have a commitment to the word, we have a commitment to the witness, there's also got to be a commitment to the work. Hey, man, I, I know I've talked too much. I'm going to not be Pentecostal. That's my last closing. <laughs> we close. That was my last closing. And brother, Gail, I do want to say something. I want to hear what you had to say. No, go ahead, Gail. Gail, oh, go ahead. Well, well, again, it's different in my church. The, the They have quarterly meetings. Everything is transparency. Um, it's, 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 it's actually done live on, on Facebook. So anybody that want to come in and see what the church is doing, they can come in and see it. But they have quarterly meetings. You don't have to be a member. Um, you know exactly way. It, 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 they don't do it by individual person, but they have a meeting letting you know where all the funds are. And it's done every quarter. And it's, it's streamed live on Facebook. And every year they call in different um, audit companies so that you can be sure that your money is not being spent inappropriately. They, they call in different firms, like different accounting firms that come in and each year it's a different firm. And they do the auditing and you have quarterly meetings. And if, if Pastor Pat want to log in, he can see it. Anybody can log in and see it because they're very transparency. They try not to have, um, they try not to hide anything because the church does a lot of ministry out of the country and in the country. So it's just, it's a little bit different. They, you, you know, you know exactly where your money is going. And the pastor is not over the, the finance department. We have a, we have a CFO over the financial um, of the church. And he does all the work. The pastors really don't have any that much to do with it. But and don't you, you don't don't you th don't I'm sorry to cut you off, but don't you think that's a reason why you have so many members in your church, yes. uh, Gail? Yes. Yes. That, yes, that, that the transparency yes. is there. Yes. And sir. the members uh, uh, see because that's what I'm getting yes. from you that if you if you be yes. more transparent with your members, that will yes. increase your membership. That's what I'm hearing. If anybody else is hearing something Amen. different, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. And I have one question <laughs> for you, Gail. Huh? I, I have one question, Gail. Is your church, is your church, uh, do they very, are they very active politically and socially? He, he don't get into politics. The only okay. thing he say is pray for the government. He don't okay. discuss lesbian gays. He preached the word and tell you what God says about marriage. Um, politically, he don't discuss it at all. He just, he always tell the church, we just pray for leadership. Like the Bible said we're supposed to do. He don't really get into that stuff because it, it divides the church. So he keeps it on a biblical base. 
and he don't get into it. He he just teach the Bible from year to year. Different. I've been there. I've been visiting since two thousand and five, and I tell you no lie, Wayne and Daryl, I have not heard the same message yet. Oh. Huh? He preaches the new. whole Bible. He he he. You know he he always have something different. He preaches in series. He does series, and everything is transparent because this place is not their home. They're trying to reach heaven. So a lot of things that we see that go on in our average uh, black churches, they're not concerned about because we're just passing through. Right. Do you think you think it's a good idea for some of these? pastors to visit other churches to see what they do and maybe yes. they can bring some of those yes. ideas to their yes. church and maybe they could get some yeah. uh, increase their membership that I mean, way i mean if, uh, i mean I, if they yeah. want because I, I can tell you this my church in in off a of commercial it's 90 percent black okay. under a white pastor almost 99 percent black to be honest I, it's, it's it's and and they raise money they give like the devil. They give, give, and give because everything is so transparency. It's a lot of mission, a lot of um, ministry in our communities, in the jailhouses, in the nursing home. We we have adopted several schools. We have communities that we supply food and different things to. We go into group home, girls home, boys home. It's mostly ministry. They're doing just what God told the church to do. Go out and make disciples. So you don't have a lot of other things that you have to really be aggravated in church because everybody's so busy not saying it doesn't have its problems every church has its problems because you know jesus had 12 people and he had a devil right in his church so we know there's problems there but it's how they handle their problems how they put god's business first his business is first nothing else because we we're just pilgrims passing through we don't we they don't get into a lot of politics stuff or a lot of craziness that you, we see in some of our churches because they don't have time because they're they are in the hedges and highways but is that a good thing or a bad thing because back in the days with dr king mm -hmm. in the 1960s mm -hmm. we had social and justice uh mm -hmm. issues that dr king brought to the forefront for all of us to be able to enjoy most mm -hmm. of our religious freedoms and other mm -hmm. freedoms that we have right now so this is question is for everyone is that a good thing or a bad thing that churches today are not involved politically and, and with social justice issues? Duran, I want to hear from you because I, I know we talk about that sometimes, <laughs> you know, at, you know, you know, you and I talk about the political issues. Uh, well, what, what are your thoughts on that, Duran? And we're going to touch on this a little bit and uh, then we're going to we're going to have. Uh, go. Yeah, we're going to have uh, Pastor Honor close us out in prayer. Well, I mean, we okay. want to get your thoughts on that. Um. I do feel like churches should be involved in political issues. And the reason being is because um, a lot of uh, po political issues that's been going on in today's time and past have went against God, spit in God's face. So we got to understand that political issues also stems from our rights, um, humans being treated right. Um, a lot of them want to pass, you know, everybody's um, how they write. If you want to be gay or whatever the case may be, we know God don't like that, but it needs to be spoke about. If some God's word is sometimes going to offend people. That's just what it is. Truth is truth. I mean, if we sit up here and you land with your spouse and your spouse say, I, you know, I flirted with a man last night. I just, I just want to be honest with you. You know, it ain't going to feel good to hear it, but it's the truth. So political <laughs> issues needs to be addressed as well. Yeah, like she said, it's um, the political issues might divide the church. Yeah, right. That means he, there, well, there, there political issues. There's tribalism. You know, if no. we got one mission in God's word, then I don't think who who you vote for or who I vote for should divide us at all because we got one mission and that's God's word. Well, he do he do touch on it, but he comes from a biblical point. Okay. And the biblical the biblical point is God always told you to pray for your, pray for the pray for your government. Like the from the two pastors on that on should more social justice issues and uh, 
Uh, Pastor Pell, you go. Uh, issues. You, 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 at the forefront you, of the church. Now. You go, Pastor Pell, and then we're gonna let uh, Reverend Anna close us out with his thought and, and with prayer. You know, when my undergrad is in political science, I tell people my 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 job that if I ever stop pastoring, the one job I really wanted to be the mayor of a city. Uh, that's just what my undergrad looks like. By nature, right. by nature, holiness is a political lifestyle. It is contrary to the world system. So if you live a holy life, you are always going to be some purity. In, and I think I brought up earlier, in that purity era, there are principles that we live by and there are practices that we, we, we must govern ourselves by. As such, we must talk to people about that. One man, one woman. Um, hand for your brother. That's it. He said, no. He said, these two hold the whole lot. Love your neighbor as yourself and love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your spirit. He said, these are the two great commandments. Those are political statements. Now, how that practically plays out, I do think there's issues that we need to talk about. Uh, the question is, is the church on Sunday morning a place to talk about it? I don't know. I, I don't always agree with that. I do believe that the church can be a community where we can have a conversation like this. Sunday morning belongs to God. If it ain't lifting God up, if it's not exalting his word, we, may, we need to put that aside. We can say, listen, we're going to talk about this, this practice later on. Uh, and I think that's, I think this was sort of against because her pastor tried to balance, and I try to balance that. Um, if we do those things, we are probably going to always be seen as political. Now, the one thing we should not do, and I don't do, is we should never have a preference over a person if that person's policies violates God's word. And as Brother Delga said, you know, that's, that's where we're going to have the divine line. The Bible said, listen, there won't, be, there won't be times of peace because his word will separate father from son, mother from daughter. And that, that, that does that. Uh, John 6, I think John 6, 6 and 6 is uh, one of the saddest verses of scripture to me. They had just finished eating the, the uh, communion. And uh, he said, you know, hey, except you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you can't walk with me. And the Bible said, many didn't walk with him anymore. I do believe we're coming in today, as brother said, we're in the last day when many will not be walking with you because to walk with God means you're going to walk totally different than the world. And that by itself is a political statement. Pastor Otto. Close us out. Uh, you you give us your last final thought and then close us out in prayer. Well, if anyone else want to say anything after that, just. I will quit acting like I ain't on here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back. I need to clarify this. Okay, go ahead. How I say I tithe, that's, I'm not saying deadlock, that's the way it should be. I'm saying that's what works for yes. me. Uh huh. I got too many other things that to worry about than to be worried about that right now. Right. And there's nothing, and I mean nothing, worth my peace of mind. Peace? Oh, my God. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. What you doing over there with that? Mm -mm. That's you. That's mm -mm. Like I said, that's between you and the Lord now. <laughs> and if you doing wrong, the Lord coming back for who? You. He coming for me. Like a thief in the know, night. Like, good faith. <laughs> the devil is busy. Yeah. And when I say busy, I'm that joker don't stop. Non-stop. He don't stop. And we at he, home sleep. He got the name devil because that's what he is. He does his job proficiently. Around the clock. Before I can come up with an answer how to defeat him, he owns something else. <laughs> but I got a God, like I say, that's what? Bigger than anything I know. And all I got to do is lay it in his hand. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Well said. Pastor Arnold. Uh, thank y'all so much for this um, gathering tonight. Um, and I, I just think that when we look at stuff politically, at least I know in our Zion, we can talk about it, but we cannot tell you who to vote for. Um, and because we cannot tell you who to vote for, I still look at from this standpoint. I, I think our number one problem everywhere is we don't get along. 
you have roughly 25, what, 100 registered voters in the city of Deerfield and only 1,200 turned out to vote for commissioner. That's in no. one. That's in one district. In one zone or one, one zone. Okay. And so when, when we look at it, what would be the difference if we did come together? What would, what, what, what would happen? See, so when we look at it, um, I think that even in the midst of attacking or, or perfecting, we first have to unite. Once we unite, then we can see the strength and move where we need to move. See, so is the church really empty because of non-transparency or is it empty because we just don't get along? Getting along could have a big problem, big, big part of it, Pastor Hunter, because a lot of people there say, you, you know, I go to work and then I have to put up, you know, with, yes. with, with, with yes, all Darryl. kind of foolishness at there work. Go, and then Darryl. I come to the church and I have there to put up with foolishness at the church. And I'm not just yeah. don't want to be a part of that. I'm not going to let the church or my job disturb my peace. There you Nothing go. worse than church hurt. And, right. and, yes. and, and exactly. You got to put up with it at work for 40 hours a week. Uh -huh. And then on the weekend, when you're supposed to be relaxing, you're putting up with it at church. Okay, Dar why, Dar you know why? why? You know why? why? Because why? there's no change. You you got the world watching the church, and they know Sister Sally Sue. And they've been seeing Sister Sally Sue go to church for the last 40, 50 years, and she ain't got no change. Some people don't want to be bothered with that. And that's why I say I love my church, because it's a Bible teaching church where I have seen people's lives change and be transformed. And a lot of our local churches there is no change. So the usher is still got a nasty attitude. The pastor is still preaching and throwing off on the pulpit. Yes, we know Sister Sue is a, is a prostitute. We know Brother Johnny drinks, but he's <laughs> at the place where he's supposed to get help. So you preach the word and don't preach at them because we already know they got problems. They're coming for help. You, your, your place as a pastor is to give them stuff to help them be set free. We already know who's doing what in the church, in most of our black churches. You don't have to remind them from the pulpit. Stick to the word. You will see growth and you will see people's lives transform and change. But first, oh. they got to see you change. Because if you're still acting the same way you was acting 30, 40 years ago, you no, know they don't want to come. Because yeah, still, you, you haven't changed. And you think people know you haven't changed? Please. The devil know you haven't changed. Some of these people <laughs> on drugs know you, know you haven't changed. Because... Some people have discernment and they may not be in the church, but they know that's not how a Christian is supposed to act. Mm. Why is that person mm. acting like that? Mm. Ouch. Good analogy. Boy, yeah, okay. and, and, and Miguel, that's why we wanted you on this podcast because you always bring it just like that and you give it to us straight and you don't hold nothing we back. Have, no we, have to, we have to be real. We you have to be to real. You have to be real. Shouting, <laughs> prophesying, running around the church long enough. Yeah. Let's get delivered and say for real. Amen. This is an ongoing conversation. This is an ongoing conversation oh, that we God. will be having. This is an ongoing conversation. We're going to have a part have two. Have we will it. have a part two. It'll be a different panel, uh, different pastors, uh, you know, from a different perspective. We're going to try to get somebody from uh, another church or, uh, you know, the, the Episcopal church. So if y'all out there uh, looking in Facebook land, if y'all want to be Muslim a part church, of this, we want we want to talk to all the pastors. You, you want to be a part of and, a panel. And I know we didn't read all the comments here today, and a lot of people have been commenting here. And uh I was just afraid to pu push the button because I didn't want to lose y'all here on there. It was such a good, this is such a good conversation and, and, and discussion here today. It was very good. I wanted to hit the comments there, but uh, you know, I, I could see them popping up, but I couldn't read them. So I apologize to all our viewers out there on Facebook. But I will be going back, uh, watching this live stream here. Uh, uh, please, I'm, I'm, please I'm, saved, I'm saved, but I still got a little speed in me. Listen, I ain't hard to find, I'm always in Deerfield. But if you want to come see me at 9 30, uh, uh -huh. Elementary, listen, I'm always there. You bring yours, you bring your listen, I'll bring mine. May, may the God of Lance and I find you with it. I love you. <laughs> Amen. 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 He's you know, a he's a man to find too. You know, you know, Pastor Phil, me and you been conversating for for years, for yeah, a long time. Yeah. Number one, we two Virgos. 
Our birthdays not days behind each other, and we born <laughs> in the same year. You always say it, we think alike. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got two little Jehovah Witness ladies. They'll probably be here in the morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I know you're looking for All right. Evelyn, but the Evelyn, Evelyn, yeah. those those Jehovah Witnesses will 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 beat a saint up with the word because they study. They come and yes, they ma'am. give us a spanking because we just yes, know ma'am. how to scream, holler, and shout and run around the church. We have no word. If those Jehovah mm-hmm. Witnesses and, the and those other churches, they full the of word. If I don't have they they interpreted it the wrong way. Come on, Desmond. Say, say what you got to say. We don't want to. No, no. We don't want you to feel left we out. We don't want to close this out. And you didn't get a chance to say what you need wanted to say. say so what you need to say. Then we'll give it to pa- no, 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 the no, no. Pastor Honor. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna give you your final say, and then uh, we're gonna turn it over to Pastor Honor for the benediction. Ms. Gail said it right. I was talking about the Seven Day Adventist Church because I was gonna say the Seven Day Adventist yes. Church at the street has a line every Monday where they give out right. food and. It's every Monday consistently. And I'll be honest, I haven't seen a church in Deerfield do what they've done. And so, I mean, the seven day Adventists are, you know, like I said, really in the community. But why does it take that? Take what? Them to, them to get in the community? All them That's people, that, they go to that church. They go to that church. They know what's up. A lot of them people don't even go to that church. That church don't even be that tight that really on Saturday. But that line for that food, what they give, and I bet a lot of those people really appreciate that giving and that. And so I, I would just challenge, like like we say, some of the black churches to get together and do stuff like that, and you would get more people. I mean, we're we talking about how empty the church is. I think people have to see the church more within the community. Period. You know what I mean? Because every Monday when I ride past there, it's packed. It's packed well, every I'm Monday. Where I am. And, 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 I, and I guarantee you, they don't have a problem with people giving and people supporting that church. And That's so right. Even if they don't go there, you go. even if they don't That's attend right. that church. You know what I'm saying? So they're reaching out to people who, they're doing their job. They're doing their job. So I just yeah. challenge all the churches. I mean, and I'm not saying that none of the churches that, you know, aren't doing that, but I think like we, we keep talking about the black church and we have to have a different conversation. When we talk right. about the black church in the community and, you know, what we're trying to do within the community, okay. you know. Um, so you're saying and, they, need, you know, they need to be they need to be more visible in the community is what you're basically saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like Pastor Gus said, well, come to me at 930. But, you know, sometimes people want to see you at Westside Park or somebody want to see you at, you know this or that, or, you know, or somebody want to see you giving out something. I mean, it, and it's sad, but I mean, that's kind of what the work of, you know, the work of, the work of, you know, the Bible said, if you ain't feeding them or clothing them or giving them shelter, then, you know, you know, sometimes what are you doing? You know, you can't just shove the word out people's throat. Go ahead, Deron, yeah, you had your hand up. Within the community. I'm, I'm going to just say this before, you know, this will be my close out, you know, like, <laughs> like Desmond was saying, people want to see, and it's it. simple. That's it. As for as I can speak for a woman and a man. When a man get up and cut his grass and edge his grass and fertilize it, don't you stand on that porch and look at that grass? Yes, and you sit do. Up there and take your drink and just look at that grass and say, boy, it look good. And as yes. for the woman, don't want y'all cook a meal and you pass the meal off to somebody who you feed and you sit there and watch that side eye and see, make sure it tastes good to them because you want to see. Simple and plain. When we got time to cook, because now we got to cut the grass too. <laughs> 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 all right pastor you got it you got it to close us out here and uh you know, so again i want to thank everyone more, more transparency bring something new to the church be more creative teach and be more visible out in the community pastor honor all right let us pray most gracious god we thank you for our setting tonight we thank you uh for just being god and Lord, we ask that thou will continue to hold us in the hollow of your hand. Lord, continue to protect those who are represented here on this live feed. This we pray in your name. Amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, thank, you thank, thank you all, man, for taking the time out, you know, uh, to come on this podcast, man, and tr- hopefully try to get uh, our viewers and the people around the world some answers uh thank you to our pastor clarence honor greater bethel deerfield beach uh uh pastor uh anthony pelt 
uh, Radiant over at Radiant. We want to thank the ladies, Miss Evelyn Price, uh, Miss Gail McFadden, uh, my man, uh, Desmond Wilson, and De uh, Deron Grissy. Thank you all. Thank you for all of our viewers. Uh, for watching. It will be a part two. Y'all stay tuned to the Adams Brothers Podcast a Facebook page. We post there every day and uh, stay tuned for the updates and we will let you all know. Thank you all so very much. Go Miami Heat. We want to see you sleep tonight. So I know y'all want to watch the game, so we're going to get you out here to go see. <laughs> Let's go, Heat. <laughs> Next Wednesday, the 31st, uh, we're going to have uh, someone from the city of Deerfield Beach Engineering and That's Utilities, right. and they're going to be next Wednesday at 5. Priscilla, her name is Priscilla. I can't Signet, her last Signet, Signet. Signet. And she's going to be talking about the drainage issues, the new smart meters that everything. every customer here in Deerfield yeah. is going to get everything. Right. So join us next Wednesday at 5 p.m. We're going to bring it here to you right here on the Adams Brothers Podcast. Everybody have a wonderful evening, and let's go Miami Heat. Have a good All right, evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye.